The eternal question of is the Chevy Volt an EV or is it a hybrid is a tricky one to explain. In the truest sense of the word, this is a plug-in hybrid. Let's dive under the hood and talk about exactly what makes the Volt tick. The first thing to know, of course, is that the 2016 Volt shares very little with the 2015 Volt. This is the second generation of the Voltec drivetrain. The true heart of the system is split between the 18.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, which is a little bit larger than last year, and this 1.5 liter four cylinder engine, which is also a little bit larger than last year. At its heart, the 2016 Volt is a plug-in hybrid. Now, I know that General Motors has toyed with some various ways of describing this drivetrain, calling it a plug-in hybrid in the Cadillac ELR, calling it an EV with a range extender in the first generation Volt, and then sort of massaging that on into a plug-in hybrid generally for this generation of the Volt. What you call the Volt, however, is not as important as how the Volt behaves, because this really is the only plug-in hybrid vehicle in the United States that operates almost the same whether you're operating on EV only or on gasoline. The power output figures from this drivetrain are 149 horsepower and 294 pound-feet of torque, regardless of whether you're operating on EV or on gasoline. Now, you should know that when you're operating on gasoline in hybrid mode, the torque curve does change a little bit, but it is still 294 foot-pounds. The torque curve alteration when it's operating in hybrid mode does mean this is one-tenth of a second faster zero to 60 in my tests than when it's operating in EV mode, but that is a very, very small difference. And that small difference is actually the big difference between this and every other plug-in hybrid sold in the US. The Ford, the Toyota, the Honda plug-in hybrids, they all have very different zero to 60 times when you're operating in EV mode or when you're operating in hybrid mode. Let's dive deeper into the Voltec system so we can understand exactly what's going on. In the first generation Chevy Volt, we had two motors, a planetary gear set, and an internal combustion engine. If that sounds very similar to the Ford or Toyota hybrids, then you're right. The design is actually very, very similar. But there was a very key difference in that system. General Motors added clutch packs to their planetary gear set in that original first generation Voltec system. That allowed General Motors to do a few things. It allowed them to make sure that the internal combustion engine that we see right here under under this hood was not involved at all when it was in EV mode. And that's not necessarily something you can do at all speed ranges in the Ford or Toyota designs. The other thing those clutch packs allowed you to do is operate in a true serial mode. And that's where the engine is driving one motor, that motor acts as a generator, it's sending power to the battery or to the other motor. That allows that car to get more torque than the engine could provide alone. However, because serial hybrid mode is not as efficient as parallel hybrid mode when you're operating at a steady speed, say out on the highway, that Voltec unit was also able to move into a parallel hybrid mode. The second generation of the Voltec system is entirely different. Instead of a single planetary gear set, this actually uses two planetary gear sets, two motors, and the internal combustion engine. The new transmission allows the Volt to operate in five distinctly different drive modes. The first is pretty easy to explain. If your battery is fully charged, it's operating in EV mode with one motor driving the wheels. There are times where it is either necessary to use two motors in order to give you more torque or it's just more efficient to use two motors. So there is also a two motor mode where the battery is sending power to both motors and both motors work together to help drive the car forward. Once your battery is completely depleted, the Volt will switch to hybrid mode automatically and it will choose from three distinctly different hybrid modes, low range, fixed ratio, and high range. Perhaps the most important difference between the first generation Voltec system and the second generation Voltec system is that this second generation Voltec system really does not spend any time in true serial hybrid mode. Working your way from a stop during low or moderate acceleration, the car will actually start out with just the electric motors in EV mode. It will then switch over to low range extended mode or if you just push the accelerator pedal all the way down, it'll automatically engage low range extended. You can also think of this mode as input split. The two planetary gear sets make things a little bit more complicated than the single planetary gear set we had before, so this is a conceptual diagram over here on the side. Basically, power goes from the engine to the wheels and to the first motor generator unit. In between the first motor generator unit and the second motor generator unit lie the car's electronics and the battery. The battery can be called upon to produce more power when it's needed. Again, the important thing here, however, is that this is operating very much like a Toyota Prius. Power is going from the engine to the wheels, as well as from the engine to one motor generator unit to the other motor generator unit and then to the wheels. In order to improve efficiency, there is also an all new fixed ratio extended mode. And this is when the engine is driving the wheels directly. As the name implies, when you enter this mode, there is a fixed ratio between the internal combustion engine's rotational speed and the rotational speed of the front wheels. Now, additional power can be called upon from the battery and would be provided by the second motor generator unit. 
However, the key distinction here is that no power is going from one motor generator unit to the other in order to go to the wheels. And that is the most efficient way to drive a car forward because the electrical connectivity path between one motor generator unit and the other is never going to be 100% efficient. So it's most efficient to drive the wheels directly from the engine at certain speeds and at certain loads. The final mode is high range mode, sometimes also called compound split mode. This mode is quite unique. In this particular mode, some of the engine's power is going from the internal combustion engine through two planetary gear sets to the wheels, but some of the power is also going from the internal combustion engine through the two motor generator units and then onto the wheels. This particular mode is used because it improves efficiency at higher speeds. It allows the engine to run at a more efficient and lower RPM than it would be able to in its fixed ratio mode. Perhaps the most interesting thing in my mind about the Chevy Voltec drive system in this 2016 Volt is that this now is a little bit closer to General Motors two mode hybrid system that we saw in their large trucks and SUVs a while back. The addition of the second planetary gear set allows this vehicle to operate in three distinct hybrid modes. It also allows those hybrid mode transitions to be incredibly smooth compared to the last generation Volt. This transmission can change from low range extended to the fixed ratio to the high range extended mode really quite seamlessly. The 2016 Chevy Malibu uses a variant of the Volt's hybrid system for 2016. It's quite similar in terms of overall design, but there are a few important changes. The first thing, of course, is that it uses completely different motors. The different motor technology that we see in the Malibu is largely why it gets a few miles per gallon better than this Volt. This Volt averages 42 miles per gallon combined, the 2016 Malibu will be 47 combined. According to General Motors, a lot of the difference is contained in the General Motor design. They use more rare earth material in the Malibu's motors, making them a little bit more efficient and improving that highway mileage. Now the reason General Motors didn't do that in the Chevy Volt is that the average Volt driver really doesn't drive on gasoline that often. With a 50 mile range in this 2016 Volt, the average person can easily do their daily commute round trip and never use any gasoline. The Chevy Malibu is not a plug-in hybrid, of course. It has a much smaller battery than the Chevy Volt, so it needs that extra efficiency in order to maximize the gasoline usage. In theory, the Volt is not really going to be using that much gasoline, so its gasoline efficiency is a little bit less important. Although Chrysler hasn't released all of the technical details on the brand new Pacifica Hybrid minivan, I do expect it to be quite similar to the Voltec 2 system. Pouring over the patents that were recently released by the U.S. Patent Office, that Pacifica Hybrid system also uses two planetary gear sets and two motors and a whole bunch of clutches inside to operate in very similar modes to what we're seeing right here in the Volt. Now Chrysler has not yet released all the details that we would need in order to comment specifically on the Pacifica's new drivetrain, but they do look very, very similar and that shouldn't surprise you. Because again, this does look like it pulls a few pages out of the book that GM and Chrysler wrote together on their two mode hybrid systems that we saw on the Silverado and on the Chrysler Aspen SUV. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you want to know more about the 2016 Chevy Volt, there is a full review on my channel as well, and hopefully we'll be able to see that new Pacifica minivan very soon. I'll see you later.